giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in FIRST. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash FIRST. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everybody, welcome to Rose and Robots on First Updates Now. We'll be kicking back and having some great conversations with some amazing people in the FIRST community over a delicious beverage in our favorite mugs. Um, I'm your host, Christina Tia from Wordplay All Day and FRC Team 125, The Neutrons. And our producer for tonight is the one and only Tyler from Fun. So tonight we'll be channeling our inner Oprah, uh, not to hand out free cards, unfortunately, but to let you all know what some of our favorite things are. Um, joining us tonight to give their take on this and more, we have two guests that have been FRCing since the 90s. So making her fun debut, I believe, um, undoubtedly FRC's most badass human, an alumni of FRC Team 47, yes, Chief Delphi, the team, not the website, and current mentor on Legendary 469, an epic key volunteer in her district and champs, it is Margie. So thanks for having or coming on tonight, Margie. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I love that everything is pink behind you. It's like <laughs> Yes, it's my awesome. office. I like it. All right. And a familiar fun face alumni of team 228 and current mentor of team 6328, which he had to double check because it's a lot of digits. It is Dave. <laughs> Off to a good start. Uh, <laughs> I'm never going to hear the end of that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Soak that in. So <laughs> thanks for being on, guys. Um, we have some great giveaways tonight. So from Dave, we do have a um, the Open Alliance sticker giveaway. That's going to be one of our giveaways. And I'm excited to be giving away stickers that finally showed up in the mail today. Um, our awesome Woody Flower stickers. We're going to be giving away two holographic Woody Flowers Be Kind stickers. These will be up in my Etsy shop probably tomorrow at some point. So holographic ones of the giveaway tonight, but later on in probably tomorrow, you can purchase them at this size as well. So we'll be giving away the keywords to enter into our chat tonight to win those stickers. So don't forget if you have any questions or comments that you would like to be read on air, please tag at first updates now in chat and we'll do our best to get to them later in the show. So um, I'm excited to have both of these guests on tonight. Um, both of them have been involved with FRC and first since the 90s when things were a whole lot different and kind of the same at the same time. Um, and they both stayed in the program through mentoring, which is really, really awesome. And they've both been really critical key volunteers in their districts. So, um, and at championships, which is pretty cool. So um, Margie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself because you are one of the rare unicorns in first, you were on 47. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your FRC and first history and what you do now? So, so I started on team 47. Um, as a student, I was the also the operator for um, the 2000, 2001, and 2002 um, robots. Um, and then I mentored uh, 47 up until its retirement num year in uh, 2009. Um, and then I took 2010 off to just volunteer at events. And then in 2010, 2011, I joined 469. And I've been with them ever since and volunteering in First in Michigan ever since. That's pretty awesome. So what are some of the things that you do for First in Michigan since it is huge and constantly <laughs> growing? Obviously, it takes a huge, like, mass of people to keep it going. It does. So um, I am currently the uh, volunteer coordinator for Kettering 1 and Kettering 2. And I am co-chair of the state championship. Um, I've been doing the state championship since 2012 as the event coordinator. 
Um, and then when it became, you know, four fields and a million <laughs> teams, um, me and uh, Lisa uh, Savage, <laughs> it's crazy, uh, became co-chairs. Um, she was my volunteer coordinator for a couple of years before that. And then me and her started co-chairing when we moved to Saginaw Valley. And that's kind of just what I do. I do for First of Michigan, I do volunteer coordinator for a couple of events and then uh, co-EC of states and then a couple off seasons. That's pretty epic. And it's like hearing about how the Michigan State Championship has grown. It's basically like a mini, mini champ. So kudos to you it guys is, for making that happen. It's amazing. It is insane. And to think today we would have been setting up uh, four fields and uh, lots mm -hmm. of practice fields. And today, and this would have been the first year of 200 teams at State. That's, crazy. That's so That's, crazy. That is really crazy. But the fact that you guys were able to get to that point, like it's just going to happen next year and it's going to get even bigger. So I'm excited it, to see it when it actually happens. I'm excited for it too. <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. It should be really interesting to see how everybody fits into that arena. Mm -hmm. And Dave, so you, I believe joined in on first as a groupie around the same time as Margie. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your first background and where you are now in the program? Um, so I've been involved. So my dad started team 228 in 1998. Uh, and he, I was only four or five years old. So he took me, he used to take me to every single meeting and there's a bunch of pictures of me like sleeping on the, uh, sleeping on the shop for all those all, all nighters and stuff. Uh, but I just stuck with the team pretty much my whole life. And up until I graduated and went to college, um, I really, really just loved that team so much. And they helped me so much throughout my life. Um, a lot of their mentor, a lot of the mentors there kind of inspired me, uh, once I went to college to start doing volunteering, um, a lot of those mentors are amazing volunteers. So they convinced me, uh, instead of jumping on another team, uh, take a little bit of time where you are at college and start doing, uh, start doing volunteering. And I kind of work my way up. I think my first year was 2013 doing MCing. Um, and then the last couple of years been trying to do some volunteer coordinating and stuff like that. So, and then mm -hmm. last year in April, right before we went to champs, I joined 6328. Um, they're in the same town, uh, that the company I work for is in, uh, and just kind of went in and they had a role for the lead technical mentor open. So I, it kind of worked out really well. Just, uh, fell in and, uh, I love the team. I love the kids. All the mentors are amazing. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. And it's, I always love seeing people that kind of do the full spectrum of things where, you know, they, they not only come back to mentor other students, because I mean, we obviously understand the value of having like a really good mentor and how much it sucks to have a really bad mentor, but being able to see the impact of an alumni in planning and like executing events like that. I just feel like it makes such a world of a difference because you understand what it's like to go to a really good event or have a really good experience with a volunteer at an event. So uh, I'm yeah, always grateful. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm always grateful for alumni that are willing to come and volunteer and come back time and time again and like grow in their volunteer career. So, and that's something I feel like people can be doing right now is like really looking into those volunteer roles that are on the first inspires website um, mm -hmm. and see like, what have I done? Like, what am I qualified to to do next season like what can i do now to to kind of prepare myself for that as weird as it sounds like if you're looking for something to do that's not a bad place to start yeah definitely and just um and always it may seem like oh i want to try and jump into like a, a key volunteer role or something but i started out the first year i volunteered was in 2009 and i was just worked at the safety glass table and i i realized there that there's a whole nother different side to first that you never really get to see um when you're competing as a student uh, or being a mentor on a team. So I think every single person that participates in FIRST should also uh, try and make it a point to volunteer at least uh, at least an event every year, even if it's an off-season event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Margie, you said that you um, help out with some of the off-seasons. Are those in Michigan, or do you help out with anything else that's, you know, in the, the broader kind of region that you're in? Um, not yet. I haven't expanded out of Michigan. Um, other than going and visiting some, um, like going to IRI or like last year went to uh, CNE &E up in Canada, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I just kind of usually help, um, like I event coordinate um, the all-girl tournament in um, my area um, with a couple other teams and uh, then the Kettering kickoff. 
that's pretty awesome. So, um, I know that our season got cut short. Um, everybody's kind of on pause for now. But what were some of the things that hap- that you were able to kind of do this season, whether it was with your team or in a volunteering role or running an event that like you were really pumped about or that you would consider like highlights, I guess. Um, and what were some of the things that like, I, I hate harping on, like, I wish this happened, but I think that mm-hmm. to some extent, like we do need to recognize the people, like I keep thinking about, like you were saying, Margie, like we would be setting up for district champs soon. And like, I feel, I, I feel bad or like, I, I don't know. I feel something for the people that were planning it and put in so much time and didn't get to kind of see it through so like what were some of the things that you guys were able to to do and participate in this season that were awesome and then what were some of the things that you feel like deserve a shout out i guess that you didn't get to kind of see through Hmm. margie you can start okay um i had a lot of fun doing like so i got so because of the events that i do early in the season so kettering one and kettering two are weeks one and two um i got to do that part of like my uh first in michigan stuff so volunteer coordinating Kettering one and two was so much fun, and it was really great having Nikki come out to uh, see a uh, Michigan district event. It was her first one um, in Michigan, and I was really like that wasn't champs, mm-hmm. um, so that was a lot of fun having her. And it was kind of was really excited to have her come out and visit us. Um, but I was just really like pumped for the two districts doing those two events, um, just because I had a really great um, volunteer crew that came out um both events were had a really great volunteer crew from my fields from my um uh, robot inspectors from my pit like it was just all around a great crew and i thought i felt really fortunate and lucky to have them um both weeks um i was really kind of bummed uh or i should say slash shout out shout out to my uh um my uh shooter lead um sam who was also going to be our student dry our uh dry uh, chassis driver that this year uh we were actually picked he was picked tuesday night and we were supposed to compete on thursday before uh michigan went to uh on pause um, oh, so <laughs> we were we were we were pretty late to picking our drive team but uh he was uh he did really great and i was really proud of him as far as his tryout and stuff goes so um i was really fortunate and excited to work with him but my favorite part um at least through the season with those two events working with the volunteers i had were awesome mm. yeah that's brave of you to do a week one and two event by the way so yeah, <laughs> kudos, right. kudos to you and your volunteer crew <laughs> i'm 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 fortunate enough because of kettering one and two um and this was a saving grace the steamworks here is the fact that kettering lets us leave the fields up oh, so we nice. don't have a tear down oh, after week one that's so nice and we don't have a set up for week two that saves everybody about 16 hours or actually yeah. maybe close to 20 at that point. So, so that was really, that was our saving grace. The steam works here. I told Bob Nichols, who's one of the event coordinators. I was like on Saturday afternoon. I'm like, just think we don't have a field to tear down. Like everyone mm-hmm. else does. <laughs> that is true. And to add to that real quick. So um, I'm good friends with Fiona at headquarters who has to help with setting up the field before kickoff. And I always say like, like, I obviously know nobody's going to give me any hints, but I was like, just send me, like, a, a big red X if it's going to be any worse than Steamworks, and I'm just going to quit anything that I'm yeah. like, sharing. Like, I'm out. I quit. <laughs> if anything is worse than Steamworks set up, because I just, like, Stronghold, it was like, wow, this sucks. It can't be any worse. And then Steamworks is like, here, hold my beer. Hey, guys. <laughs> Have fun at setup. So, um, yeah. So, Dave, what about you? Uh, you got to compete at two events? One event? One event, yeah, we were week one, Northern Connecticut. Um, so we were fortunate enough to get some time out on the field. Um, I gotta say the the highlight for me this season was uh, we got to take home chairmans. So we did pretty well with the robot. We ended up making it um, to be finalists, but really there's nothing nothing like taking home a chairman's banner, right? Cause that's really what it's all about. Um, it was definitely awesome to kind of work with the teams. And I think that there was so much there's so much potential with this game, right? The game is, I think it was probably one of the best games and that I've, I've seen in a really long time. Um, so just getting able to really uh, see the game played in person, um, I'm, I'm hopeful and I hope that a lot of people will get to see that, um, see that with some off season events because it is, it is crazy to see, uh, see in person. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. The so chairman really takes, takes the cake. Yeah, and congratulations to you and your student, Maddie, who was a Dean's List semifinalist at the Greater Boston District. I was thrilled that they continued interviewing students because, I mean, that's kind of how they had been interviewing students for championship Dean's List. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Margie, yeah, did no, you guys... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, in Michigan, did you guys have, like, did you get your winners announced yet? Or is it still uh, in the interview process because there are so many events? So they did, um, uh, so we were supposed to compete week three. And so they did our um, Dean's List interviews just this past Saturday. And they announced, they sent out an email to the um, teams announcing who won um, at the event. So they, they're they they're just, that was the first, um, so last weekend, I think they did all of, a, a lot of the events, at least a lot of the Michigan events. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's been, it's been great to see that there's, still like a continuation of that and i'm excited that they'll be still reviewing the submissions for chairmans because i was anxious to see how that would happen um like dave like you guys i was excited to see that you guys won at your first event i wasn't surprised but um i was like I, my heart just broke for like all the kids that didn't get to go and present but at yeah, the same time absolutely. it's like the amount of time and effort that people put into the submission it's like that's the fair and like easiest way to go so kudos to first on that um, yes yeah, so just to just to touch on the dean's list stuff so uh maddie is probably watching right now so i <laughs> very proud of you um so i did get to do some judging for the dean's list um and i think that first did given the situation they did the best that uh best that they could do given given the situation and it was it was awesome uh i gotta say i talked to uh probably a dozen or so at the dean's list uh nominees and they every single one of them had a great great attitude and that was uh mm -hmm. it it lifted my spirits a little bit because i was sort of sad going into it knowing that um like the season got canceled but it was reassuring talking to all of those students they they made me feel better in the in the end of it yeah and honestly like every time i've talked to a judge that is a dean's list judge they are obsessed with like getting that experience and like interviewing the kids and getting to talk oh, to yeah. them so I just I gotta for... say that I'm I'm glad that so I was a finalist in like 2011 or something. I'm glad that I got nominated in 2011 because if <laughs> I got I wouldn't even get nominated now. The kids are so like what they do. It's just so absolutely incredible. Mm. I could never pick one kid like uh, that. You, yeah, you'll you'll never tough. see me at a dean's list uh, a judge room because I just I can't. <laughs> yeah. You're all winners. Yeah. Um, and uh, were you going to be volunteering at any events that didn't end up panning out yet, unfortunately? Um, so this year I decided since I was doing lead technical stuff with uh, 6328, no volunteering for me this year. Uh, but I signed up for a bunch of off seasons because during the off season, just kind of let the team uh, go off and have some fun and do whatever. Uh, we don't take it seriously. So hopefully go down to Connecticut and uh, to Beantown if it happens and uh, I think there. I hear some rumors that we might be uh, potentially going down to Texas, so I might uh, volunteer down there at TRI. Ooh. That happens. I'm all about that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see the spread of events that will be available, and I think because teams didn't get to necessarily like go to events and travel. Um, not that we got all of our money back from everything that we were anticipating to do, but I know that we'll have a little extra money in our pocket. So I'm hoping that we can provide some sort of like travel fun team experience for the kids in the off season. I know that um, for a lot of us, like going to champs or like going to our uh, like district championship is like a huge highlight. So Margie, like, what has your team been up to with it? Like after everything that's gone on, not that I'm asking you to like prove how many like face shields you've printed or anything, but like, what has your team <laughs> been doing to just stay connected? I don't need to hear about <laughs> How many how many PPEs your team is trying to print out? But if you are cool, <laughs> if not, that's fine too. But what have you guys been uh, up to on 469? <laughs> so um, we've had a couple uh, online team meetings. We have one actually tomorrow, um, just to like catch up, and it's more just going to be like a hangout um, to talk to the kids and see what they're up to and see how they're doing. Um, I'm trying to schedule doing a uh, movie night online, <laughs> so do <laughs> movie night because uh, mm -hmm. we've done movie nights at our shop in the past and invited other teams to come do it. And I know my kids were really excited about doing one this year. And like we talked about doing one 
in May after the season was over, inviting some of the local teams to come. I've even like had notifications from teams on the West side saying, Hey, we'll come if you have it. Oh. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I know my kids were really super excited about that. And we'll probably still have it when uh, yeah. we're actually all right. able. <laughs> yes. that is that's, So that's Galileo. Sorry. <laughs> my pets all have very uh, nerd names, but that's Galileo. Yes. I love it. Um, so, so we were gonna I have a totally no, we were gonna... just saw a cat. I was like, yeah, I, <laughs> I had a feeling he was gonna do that. I saw him on the floor. Like, oh no, um, FOMO. <laughs> but yeah, so we just kind of been hanging out, uh, doing some talks about like, uh, we're gonna have a um, we just got a CNC router, um, over this this past summer, and this was our first season getting to use the CNC router, and so, um, some of the uh, one of the mentors is like, I'm going to teach these kids how to actually make parts using sheet metal because we're not used to it. Mm-hmm. If you've looked at any of our robots in the past, except the 2013 <laughs> robot, that's a special case because it does have sheet metal on it. Um, <laughs> all of them are tubed aluminum in some form or another. And so that's kind of just what we're used to making. It's how That's what we know. It's what we have as examples. Um, so one of our new mentors is like, now that we have some time, I'm going to use these, show these kids how to use the CNC router the way it should be. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a couple of classes. Um, I think my husband's going to do a physics workshop online with them. And so we're just going to try to make it at least close to normal as possible. Like what we would have mm-hmm. done when the season ended anyway, just starting it early. Mm-hmm. And that's a good way to, to kind of handle it. Like we had a team meeting tonight. Um, and that was something I tried to mention. Like if we look at where we are timeline wise, like we would start trying to like really put more work on like the underclassmen and other stuff. And that was like a, a like, oh crap, it is, you know, almost May. Like we do need to start getting people back into like the swing of things. But I think the movie night is huge. Like we did that too. And it was just like a nice normal thing. And I think just face, like face-to-face interaction is, is always great. Um, but Dave, what about you guys? So what are you doing to kind of Keep connection with your students and with your mentors, and keep spirits up on the yeah, so, advantage. So we took uh, we took a couple months off when we when our season kind of ended. We were like uh, like twenty hours away from getting in the buses to drive to Ottawa. Um, so it, it was it was kind of tough for a couple days, um, but then so we decided we'd take take a little bit a little bit uh, off. But we had our first full team meeting tonight. Uh, I think it went really well. And we're working on developing some new some new curriculums for CAD and manufacturing, uh, programming strategy and stuff like that. So we're going to conduct most of those through Zoom uh, until we can get back in the shop. Uh, but that'll be that'll be the bulk of it. Just kind of like you said, treating it treating it like it was the regular end of the season, and then just trying to get a lot more uh, put a lot of effort into doing meaningful training um, and maybe a couple off season projects. When we get maybe get back in the, the shop, we'll build like a go kart or something. Yeah, go karts. So that's pretty awesome. And I know that um, there was a thread on Chief Delphi from one of our fun hosts asking, you know, what is your team up to? Um, what are things that you want to kind of highlight? So if you have something you want to highlight, hop in there and make sure you post. So we're going to start um, our giveaway for the Open Alliance sticker. Um, that Dave is going to be so nicely giving away. So what is our giveaway code tonight, Tyler, that people need to put into chat? <laughs> well, I know, yeah, like I, like I thought about that ahead of time. Dave, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> um, oh God. Hype. Can hype? you do hype? We can do H-Y-P. hype. H-Y-P. Only one E? Only That's one E. Right. Only one E. All right, so go ahead and uh, type in hype in the chat right now. That's your opportunity to win the Open Alliance sticker, which uh, I'm sure Dave will send out to you. Uh, I'm yep. sure we'd prefer if you're in North America, by the way. Uh, but with that said, <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes you never know. Uh, so somebody, I, I just want a quick aside. I did have someone from Israel message me yesterday. He's like, can you start your shows earlier so I can watch? I'm like, dude, so work a full-time job. But, uh, yeah. so, <laughs> maybe soon. Uh, but once again, type in the hype in the chat. That's your opportunity to win. Don't forget our subs get five times luck because we clearly rig it for them. But other than that, everybody has a chance as long as you make sure you click that follow button so we'll be giving that away in just a few minutes mm-hmm. yeah so real quick i want to go through and just kind of highlight some of the things that are um 
people in chat and up on Chief Delphi have been posting about in response. So what is your team up to? So uh, let's see. The response that we got on Chief Delphi from Dalt3, uh, he is from FRC Team 66 Grizzly Robotics, a nice two-digit team number. He responded and said, aha, my Dean's List interview years ago has prepared me for this entire time. So well done. As part of my team effort, my involvement on Team 66 has promoted growth at an at-risk community as part of the Southeast Michigan Detroit area. As part of my own work, I created and maintained the FRC Docs project. This is the official documentation system that replaced Screen Steps for the 2020 season. FRC Docs allows many things that weren't possible with Screen Steps, such as peer-reviewed documentation, community translation, streamlined development process, et cetera. Additionally, I created time tracking software such as Grizzly Time that allows teams to keep track of various members' statistics. And my favorite part of the season was obviously kickoff, the anticipation leading up and during the season, or during that is always tremendous. Last but not least, I provide donuts. So that's pretty amazing. I don't necessarily know who Delts 3 is, but it seems like he has done a lot to contribute to his team and his community. Uh, Margie, have you ever heard of FRC Docs or Grizzly Time? Because it seems like they are a FIM team. I, they are, and I've heard <laughs> a, I've heard um, a bit about that, um, having had um, one of their mentors and helps with their chairman submission, um, Joel, um, her, he did, uh, game announcing at Kettering one and two, and he was actually helping them work on some of their, uh, typing up some, uh, doing some critiques of their chairman submission. Um, nice. so I have heard a bit about, and I love that team and they are really great. They are just an awesome resource around here and sometimes maybe not utilize the best they could. I don't think teams reach out to them enough. Mm. It's hard too because FIM has so many standout teams. It's like, where do you even begin? I'm really curious after reading this, like about the Grizzly Time thing, because something that I know our team has struggled with and we're really bad about is like documentation and like keeping track year to year of like information about our team, mainly because I suck at Excel and Google Sheets and everybody else is busy with the robot. So that's on me. But. <laughs> Yeah, Grizzly Time sounds amazing, so I'll definitely check that out. But other things that we've been seeing from some of our members, um, Madden, Mobile, well, it's a lot of words, uh, Legend4441 um, said, I'd like to share my story. Uh, I am a, or this is our lead mentor who is, or our old our old lead mentor who was, sorry, our old principal was promoted and didn't have the time to run our team anymore. Because of this, some of the parents decided to volunteer and mentor our team. Some even volunteered to let us practice in their workspace. We made a 400 plus page engineering notebook and won the Think Award at the Michigan State Finals, or F, yeah, in Battle Creek. Uh, we also toured NASA's Plumbrook Station testing facility. That's pretty amazing. Nice. So congrats yeah. to Madden Mobile Legend 4441. Uh, FTC is such a like growing like community that I'm just starting to grasp on and like mm -hmm. seeing the teams that are like hardcore into it and really like really successful are amazing to me. Um, so let's see, Kyle B from 1511 said, the students of team 1511 are filling the gap left by the lack of competitions by 3D printing NIH approved masks, creating a video series teaching kids about first and STEM topics like programming, uh, folding at home, organizing townwide fundraisers and or to purchase meals for healthcare workers, townwide trivia games to support local businesses and more. That's pretty amazing. Um, with everything that kids have going on in terms of like remote learning, I'm I'm constantly amazed at like the students on my team and other teams that I see posting that are doing all this extra side work like with their teams and with their community, like from like their remote kind of location. So mm -hmm. kudos to them. Um, so let's see, we're gonna move on in a minute uh, and start our awesome kind of Oprah moment of all of our favorite things. But real quick, um, I think Dave said, Dave, did you wanna, uh, give a quick shout out yeah, to just, you said. Um, just the big thing that actually actually matters is uh, Ryan Swanson. I know that he's from uh, 4607. He's been passing out. He has a bunch of FLL kits and he was giving them out um, to a bunch of people 
so that they could get some hands-on learning if they don't really have that stuff in-house. So just got to give him a shout out because uh, the whole program that he kind of put together uh, was a little curriculum so people could get some hands-on uh, if they not, don't normally have those resources in-house. So just wanted to give him a little shout out. And uh, and Syke was bite, baking a bunch of bread. He said that that was uh, a good contribution to the community. I don't know. Mm. Bread, bread is like the the new like we run an FLL tournament I think in like normal people world like everybody's yeah, getting yeah. into bread baking. Yeah. Margie, have you taken yeah. on any like new hobbies like baking or crocheting or scrapbooking? It's funny that you actually say that because I have my knitting right here. <laughs> yes. So I good. am trying. I'm trying my hand at yoga socks. Yoga socks. Yoga All socks. right. Well, let us. Let us know how that turns out. Jamie, who is the FRC team advocate, is in the process of finishing up an entire, like, very detailed knitted sweater. So nice. that FRC knitters unite, I feel like, needs to become a thing. All right, so we're going to give our, or we're going to draw our winner for our first giveaway for the Open Alliance giveaway. So Tyler, you want to rig, I mean, roll that, not rig that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> With a nice Freudian slip there. So, yeah. So, once again, we'll, uh, we'll draw for that for the sticker from the Open Alliance. Uh, if you want, please make sure you shoot uh, First Updates Now a message with your mailing info so we can send that out to you. People still ask every time. All right. Winner of that is going to be A-J-R-L-E-Y-V-A. See, Christine, just do that. Just spell out the whole name if it's really weird and you yes. can't pronounce it like mine. I'm not saying your name's weird. I just can't pronounce it. So, uh, but mm -hmm. congratulations for winning, and yes, a subscriber, so you know what that means. Rigged emotes in chat, because we clearly rigged it for subscribers win. Congratulations. Shoot me a message, and we'll uh, make sure that gets out to you. Congrats. Yeah. All right, so we're going to be moving on to favorite things. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of Oprah's annual release of her favorite things list, and what I'm more interested in is the fact that there are people that are paid to go through and test out all of these things that are her favorite things. So we're taking our spin on that, and we're going to be doing some fun favorites. So it could be technical things. It could be your favorite things to do with your students um, when you're stranded down uh, from a broken down bus because in New England that happened a lot for a while when we were taking the bus to Champs. Anyway, so um, we did post some of these in the fun discord if you are in there. If you're not, you should be. So we'll go through some of the responses that we get from some of those viewers as well. But uh, we're going to go through and just kind of rapid fire ask you guys what some of your favorite things are. So first starting off with you Margie, favorite robot that you worked on as a student and as a mentor? Well, I guess I, I'm kind of partial to the one in my living room. Uh, so the Chief Delphi 2000 robot, which is sad that the only video you can find on it is when it broke on Einstein. Oh. Um, and my husband doesn't let me live that down. <laughs> um, and so that would have to be my favorite robot um, when I was a student. My favorite robot as a mentor would have to be my favorite the 469 2013 bot that oh gosh yep there's me oh my <laughs> that god did you have that video where did you get that video so that so that was uploaded by um i think andy baker yeah yes so uh, i've known andy for that long too that's um, amazing <laughs> back when there was no youtube this is what you had there's the robot yes. that is in my living room and the skirts right behind this it. So this was my favorite game. I was at, like, this was my third year in first, like, as a child groupie, and this was my absolute favorite game. And I was with 175 at the time, and I think we made it to, like, the semis. We got knocked out by 131, who had one of the most, like, legendary robots that year. They would just go and pick out all the black balls, and they they kicked our butts that year. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so for those of you who were not around in 2000, so this was, in my opinion, one of the best games in first. So the yellow balls um, were worth, what, one point, and then the black balls were doublers? Margie, I don't know if they were double. Or I don't know if they were two or five, five points. points. Five points or five. They were yeah. five. That's what it was. So they were five points each. And this was like brutal FRC back in the day when you could just go and steal other people's game pieces out. You could de-score. You, you could push people off of the ramp, uh, push people over. So teams had to go and collect these balls, put them in their trough, which was like a big V. Um, and then in the center, there was this ramp that does not look that steep, but it was pretty steep and it was pretty narrow. 
it was a war zone getting onto the ramp and then hanging on the bar at the end because that was the bonus point of some value um, at the end. So people would go and hang. You had to be suspended off. Note that there are no bumpers. So the intent, you know, no miss. So it was just full on like brutal. It was amazing. like every match was so fun to watch. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it was never a dull match. Mm -hmm. And the robot and didn't break. Yeah. Sorry. Just every <laughs> well, to be fair, 131 during, I think it was semis um, in the match that they they lost to uh, my team, They their elevator just snapped and like broke. And I remember as a child being like, ah, yay, like they're broken. They're not going to steal our like balls anymore. But like these were some really intense finals that year at Champs. Like, and the best part is like, that was uh, Tim Baird from 126, who's a game announcer in New England now. Like, he was a mentor on 126 for a while. Like, these teams are still around. The people that were on these teams and behind the glass, like Margie, like they're still here, like 20 years later. And yeah, that like that to me is amazing. Like, that's really really cool. So, good good pick on uh, that being your favorite robot. Uh, so Dave, what about you? So favorite favorite robot that you were a part of as a student and so far as a mentor? Um, as a student, it had to be uh, 228's 2013 robot. That year, uh, we, we went out and we had lost uh, one of our big technical mentors. Um, and so it was our first year. It was probably my first year just really kind of uh, getting to do a ton of design and we were able to work with after our first event, we were able to do a complete redesign with uh, 2168. So we collabed with them and did um, made a brand new frisbee shooter. And at the end of that year, that was probably one of it was probably one of the best years that I was involved. There was just so much progression um, from the start of the season that felt like um, nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, and just the amount of learning that happened over the course of that season, it just like it would feel wrong to say anything besides that robot. Um, and then as a mentor at the this year's 6328 robot, I was like, yeah, happy with it. Very happy with it. Nice. I didn't sleep um, for like three months. So when I finally, <laughs> it was finally like done and ready to go to Northern Connecticut, I slept very well. Nice. That's always a good feeling. You're just like, okay, it's done. Like, oh, finally. <laughs> uh, so favorite part of kickoff as a mentor? Um, I'll start. So I think as a mentor, um, I got to go up to uh, to New Hampshire to see the kickoff live and in person. Um, if anybody has the capability or the ability to do that and is around New England, I definitely suggest doing that. That was that was awesome for me. Margie, what about you? I'm I want to do that one year, but kind of being a lead mentor if, and being in Michigan, it's a bit hard or tricky to get away and come back at a reasonable time and not spend a ton of money. Um, my probably favorite part of kickoff would be at, like, so when kick, when the game gets revealed, I usually kind of stand in the back with some of the other mentors. And I like just watching all of the kids reaction to the game coming out. Yeah. Um, and just getting to hear, like, once the game's revealed, hearing their chatter and kind of watching them and watching their little brains go. And uh, you can kind of, usually towards the end of the day, you can kind of usually pick up which kids are interested in working on what part of the robot if they're interested in it. So it's kind of fun. I like that part. Mm. What is your, like, any unusual things that your team does for kickoff or, like, during build season that is, like, a sort of, like, tradition that your team does? Anybody? I don't know. Some teams uh, I feel like have this, but not everybody does. So we do, um, and we did it this year, even though there wasn't a bag. So we usually um, do go into the shop when there was bag night. We would go into the shop on Monday, um, probably or anywhere between one to five o'clock in the e uh, afternoon, and we will stay there until the robot goes in the bag at eleven fifty nine on Tuesday. We did that still this year <laughs> um, because the kids were the kids really like doing it, and I'm willing to stay up that whole time as long as there's kids still there working. I'm willing to do it, and I every year I'm like, why did I do this to myself? I'm dying at the end of it. But at the same time, it's so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. We just, it's a lot of fun getting, like working on the robot because we're really bad at time management. <laughs> and, <Nice> and, uh, 
<laughs> and uh, it's just a lot, like, it's a lot of fun, especially, like, the lack of sleep and how silly or weird the kids get. Or And at 3 a.m., I'll play 3 a.m. by Matchbox 20. And then we'll run outside and do some type of exercise. Or I'll be like, okay, it's time for a field trip. And we'll go outside. And one year there was snow on the ground, so we had a snowball fight. Um, the year of, I think it was 2016, we threw, we took a couple of the, uh, the big, the, the ball, the, whatever they were called boulders outside and we played dodgeball. So that's, I, that's like my favorite part of like build season and things in the shop with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my, oh God, just everything about (laughs) our students is unusual. It feels like, no, (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um, they, I think that. I can't really think of anything in particular, but they kind of love, um, we love to kind of do this uh, when things are becoming apparent that we're not going to be productive, right? Like during the meeting, sometimes you just have an understanding that um, like nothing's just going to get done and we need uh, kind of like a hard reset so we can uh, refresh our brains. I just pull up this one uh, vine of a cat and we play that and laugh until we cry for like, for like, 45 minutes now, like five or 10 minutes. And then we, uh, we're back on track and the, the students don't know, but I strategically break out that cat fine because it always makes them laugh really hard. And then they, they get back on track. Um, I, the people that are talking about our kickball tournaments don't, our, uh, dodgeball tournaments don't talk about, don't talk about that. (laughs) Nice. So, that segue is not the uh, don't talk about that, but the part before that segue is into my next favorite. So favorite way to uh, either obviously or by inception in like mentor method to engage students when they're being either like obnoxious, dysfunctional or bored. Like what are your mentor tricks that you're willing to share with people tonight dave i'm gonna put you on the spot because you're getting grilled in chat and i am yeah so i have a i have a really good one oh my god please play that That also also vines i didn't know were still accessible i thought vine was like not a thing anymore but oh i think it's actually oh it's a tiktok TikTok. i i think it wasn't like an og vine i don't remember um (laughs) so so i have one at competition that i like to uh, Um, just kind of like an overarching strategy, right? Is I think the kids, um, the students respond really, really well um, to when somebody is incredibly passionate about that. And they almost get, um, it's just like an organic way to inspire them, right? So there was probably a lot of people that saw me at Northern Connecticut. And as we were getting towards the end of the end of the event, um, I started letting my emotions kind of show a little bit, like frustrations and not like, openly like yelling and stuff like that, but just, just being frustrated. Um, and the students seeing that they kind of like reflect it and take it in. And then you have a conversation with them and like, look, we put a lot of work into this. We got to focus, um, and kind of having that conversation and, and being, being real with them. Like I was actually having those emotions, right? Like we go into our second to last match that matters whether or not we're going to be three or one and we lose by two points. Like that's upsetting. So kind of being open in uh in and communicating those that passion with them, um, I think the students start to reflect it. Um and our students when when I was started doing that, it just kind of ha- it happened organically and then I started to realize it. And I think that's something that um a lot of mentors can use. Like don't be afraid to be honest and real. Uh, with your students, because I think you engage better with them. Um, and then when you engage better with them, you help uh, the whole like teaching process and the education system. I think it works a lot better. Mm-hmm. Margie, what about you? Like, what are some of your uh, tricks you pull out as a mentor? So I can't say it's one of my tricks. It's one that I learned from having Dan, uh, being on a team with Dan Kamara. Um, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is um, we... Uh, use push-ups as kind of a punishment slash trying to get the kids to like focus. Yes. Um, Cor- but I have, corporal punishment. But I've proven to them um, <laughs> that it doesn't just go both. It, it goes both ways. Uh, I've uh, usually happens. The drive team ends up doing more of them, especially towards the end of the season when they should know better about certain things, um, doing certain things with the robot when they know they should have known better. 
and I've done them myself after uh, 2017. I left a ratchet in my pocket of my hoodie and the robot was on the field and uh, we knew when it was going to go hang that the robot was going to go crashing to the ground because the oh. ratchet was in my pocket. And I had to do push-ups in the pit. I was, cause I screwed up. I had the ratchet in my pocket. Um, and I let the kids know it's not just when they screw up. If mentors do it too, we need to pay the price too. And the kids uh, have a lot of fun with it too. They, mm -hmm. we've done it in the pits with the kids and some teams will be like, Oh my gosh. And the kids will be laughing and doing it. And it's a lot of fun. That's a, that's like a really cool accountability check in like, I don't know. I saw get push ups, but I mean, <laughs> oh no, mine were horrid. Like the kids laughed at me. <laughs> hey, but you did them. And that's, I mean, I think that kind of parallels what Dave was saying about like just, mm -hmm. just kind of keeping things at eye level with them. And that definitely goes a long way. I've seen that really kind of change the approach that kids take if they're like not doing so hot or I don't know. It definitely helps. Uh, so moving on to more favorites. So let's see. Favorite event that you've been to recently? Margie. Oh, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if it's this year, I would have to say, I don't know if Kettering 1 or Kettering 2 was better. Um, just because I had different, some volunteers were better. I think I did a better job as a volunteer coordinator for Kettering 2, so I had a lot more fun. Um, I, there was like a ton of stuff that I meant to take for like the volunteers to make their experience better. I meant to take kids to Kettering one and realized halfway there that they were still at home. <laughs> and yeah. so I was like, I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to remember that for Kettering too. Um, in the last, I th but I mean, if we go within a year, I want to say Worlds last year, it was probably the most fun I've had at Worlds without having my team there. Um, Cause I helped with like team load in uh, mm -hmm. for the first time. And that was a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> Everybody, let's clip that in Twitch. I helped mm -hmm. with load-in, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Chris, uh, Christine already made. had, Christine, before it got, uh, before uh, Champs got canceled, she had already said, hey, you know, you're helping out with team load-in. Remember that, even if your team's there. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I'll be there. I'll help with team load-in. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, Dave, quick answer. We're going to start doing some rapid-fire answers. So, Dave, most recent event, maybe in the last like five years that you've been to, that is the favorite. Um, uh, just twenty twenty Northern Connecticut. Awesome. Just All right. Favorite venue food that you've had, Margie. <laughs> uh, elephant ears. Um, in 2015-2016 MSC. I don't know what those are, but I'm curious. Dave, favorite venue food that you've had. I have I have no clue in answer to this question. I think I just like drink water all day. I don't know if I um, eat it I'm gonna answer it for you then. Dippin' Dots, Champs. Oh yeah, you're right. Dippin' Dots. Dippin Dots. All Dippin Dots. I did at Champs was eat Dippin' Dots. Uh, yeah. In the chat, post your favorite foods. What event you got it at? Oh, the because... corn and I rye. How did none of us say oh, that? Oh my god, <gasps> you're talking official events. That's obvious. And it's baked potatoes right. at I rye. It's not corn. It's not all about the corn people. Get on the baked potatoes with the pulled pork on top of it. Just saying. Anyway, so we're moving on. I don't know what elephant ears are, but I'm I'm curious. We'll have to do more of that later. Margie, is elephant ears a Midwest thing? Like I know what those are, but I've only ever seen them really at like fairgrounds and yeah. stuff. And it just so happens that at MSC in 2015-16, they had like those carnival type food things inside the venue. It's it's wow. a giant flaky pastry with like cinnamon sugar on it. Yes. It's delicious. It's not fried dough, though? Yeah, it's fried dough. It, it's fried dough. Let's go oh, okay. fried dough. Fairs in the Northeast suck, okay? We don't yeah, get all the cool yeah, stuff. Not, not big state fairs. Anyway, so moving on. Favorite crate from a uh, team at Champs, because you guys have been around long enough to appreciate the artistry of a team crate that is just sitting out there for you to stare at. Mm. I think Buzz is 175. This is it bright yellow? Yeah, fire. Buzz has a good one. That's very memorable. Robot I casserole. Like, That's my pick. I like pink team, but I'm kind of uh, preface to pink. <laughs> I love the pink team. People are saying team crates question mark in chat. Oh like, my god. There were still team crates in the last like two years, guys. Oh, that was Tyler, but people were actually asking. And I'm surprised Meredith Novak hasn't responded yet with her favorite team crate because she's probably seen them all. So oh, yeah, yeah, I think sure. 
yeah. If you have a favorite team crate that you've seen at either Champs or another event, you should post it in there. I'm always impressed by the teams that, like, 4481. Is that Waffles' crate? Oh, my God. I'm yes. sorry. I cut you off. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, Waffles' crate looks like an actual waffle. <laughs> like, props. Real good. I'm sure FedEx is pumped, too, to see these when they're, like, mm. hauling stuff through. But um, 4041, they're their crate is like full on functional. Like that thing un unfolds oh, yeah, like a transformer and is like, let's go. So I'm always uh, excited about that. So favorite division names, uh, Houston and Detroit, since they are split now, what is your favorite uh, subdivision or division name? Uh, um, I'm trying to think of a Houston one, Carver, right? And then uh, Tesla from Detroit, just cause last year Tesla was our division, so. Margie, I'm, partial, really? I'm partial to Galileo and Curie, but that's two of my pets too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> props to naming one of your pets after Curie. Um, I'm a huge fan of Hopper. Somebody in Discord, uh, Roboteer5291, said Robling. I personally love the uh, field artwork from Robling mm -hmm. when they debuted the field artwork. I was obsessed with it, and then I researched it and realized that like. Uh, Robling was super interesting because his wife helped with like the, the bridge that they were making. Was it Robling? I think so. Anyway, uh, Jamie stole me a pin from Champs that year. Anyway, so I I love the the like artwork that they created for the fields the years that they debuted all the new ones. So I hope they keep that coming. Uh, favorite team handouts. And you can say more than one. I'll give you the choice of like saying two. And I'll start because I just had them in mind. One of them was from Palmetto. I can't remember the team name, but it's downstairs. They handed out koozies. Rock on to those people. Oh, that's uh, awesome. And then the, the, in 2014, my mom uh, was a judge at the Hartford District. And 177 Bobcats were giving out socks that were like uh, South Windsor High School spirit socks. I still have them. Probably one of the best pair of socks I own. Except for wool socks. But... Hands down, two best giveaways. Uh, Dave, what about you? Best team giveaways that you've... Um, I'm going to go with the, the 2168 socks because they gave me an entire uh, bag of them to give to all of our students. And I think I kept like 10 pairs and that's like all I wear for socks. I'm wearing my loafers now, but when I do wear socks, just those mm -hmm. socks. And Margie, what about you? It would have to be a million years ago when I was a student. I don't know if they still give it away. Was the, uh, the TJ Square gave away a keychain that was like a, a square, but it was like also etched TJ and it had the square and then their socks. I have lots of their TJ square socks back from when I was a student. That makes me so happy. So 88, uh, their lead mentor, Liz Califf, who is also like, who I would consider the Woody Flowers voice in New England. If anybody's ever hear, heard her, she has the most like thick Massachusetts accent. Like the Woody, Flowers, the Woody Flowers yeah. award. So <laughs> she's been... She's been coaching that team. She was the original Woody Flowers Award winner in 1992, I believe. Amazing person. I love her. Like, even as an eight-year-old, I remember, like, seeing her, like, in her tie-dye. Uh, she's retiring as teacher this year, and this is her last year on 88. And the seniors on 88 wore green tie-dye this year, and they mm -hmm. made Liz her own green tie-dye shirt. So, one of my original <laughs> One of my original mentors is now a mentor on 88, Joe Johnson. Oh, yeah, Joe Johnson. Oh, my God, Joe Johnson. He, 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 was, I, he was my original mentor. He is a genius. Oh, I was talking with him at uh, at SE. Oh my God, that guy. If Incredible. anybody in chat or anywhere in the world ever has the opportunity to speak to Joe Johnson, just do it. Uh, he's epic. And 88 getting the mentorship from Joe Johnson, like from a mile away, you knew that he was mentoring that team. Uh, just so, looking at their robot, I like watched it and then it was just amazing. I was like, and, you just kind of knew, right? A little birdie just told me that Joe will probably be on a show next week. Oh, oh. So stay tuned for that. Like he is, oh man. I feel like Margie we'll and, and Joe and like other people from way back in the day need to just do a serious fun like history lesson for all the kids out yeah. there. Um, Having him so, and Mike Marta for my favorites in the whole wide world. Legends. So real quick before we keep going on this, we're going to start our giveaway for the... I'm going to give away two uh, holographic Woody Flower stickers. So in chat, in order to win, uh, type in Woody, because Woody is the best. Um, so if you want to win, type in Woody in chat, and we're going to keep trucking through, and we're going to try to wrap this up soon. So real quick to wrap this up, because I would love to keep talking forever, since I don't have to wake up early for work tomorrow, but... Um, 
Let's see. So I'm going to have you guys answer favorite robot you didn't work on. It could be an old school robot or recent and your favorite game announcers and MCs. And while they are thinking about that, um, in chat, if you guys want to participate and answer, favorite robot you didn't work on could be from way back in the day, like 47 and 2000, epic, uh, or as recent as somebody answered in Discord with 118's most recent robot for 2020 as their favorite robot. Um, so type in chat, let us know. And if you want to win our giveaway for the one of two uh, Woody Holographic stickers, type in Woody in chat. So, Dave, I'm going to put you on the spot. Favorite game announcer MC doesn't have to be stuck together combo and robot you didn't work on old school or recent or both. So game announcer, it's got to be Andy Grady, right? Andy Grady is like... Voice of New England. Yeah. yeah, the OG New England. Like, I grew up listening to him, and it's been so amazing. He's been coming back around and doing events. Um, so literally, if you're not in New England, tune into some New England events and find the one that he's at. Um, he's absolutely incredible. And also got to give a shout out to Angry Eric because he taught me to do MCing. He's phenomenal. I've never met a person with more energy than him. I don't know how he does it. Um, incredible. And then Robot, um, my favorite robot was 40 from 2011. There, it had, um, they competed at us with us at WPI. And I remember the first time seeing that robot, it has I'm not even kidding you, it probably has 5,000 lightning holes on it. It looks, it's the most insane thing that you've ever seen. Um, but it was just one of those robots that I saw, and that was really when I was getting super interested in doing design stuff and talking with their mentors who were super open um, and really, uh, really engaging and wanted to talk about the robot. And that was a very inspiring moment, that robot from 2011. And they're not around anymore, I miss them. Yeah, uh, Dan La Rochelle, who used to be the lead mentor on that, his kids are currently like kicking ass and taking names and Beck. So really? That's awesome. I would agree with you, 40 was awesome. So Mardi, what about you? Favorite game announcers, MCs, and favorite robot you didn't work on, uh, recent or old school? So probably my favorite robot I didn't work on would have to either, see, I'm, I have a toss up, either between the 469-2010 robot mm. or the- I almost 70... said that, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> or the 71 2002 robot because that one was pretty uh epic and awesome to play against 71 was pretty awesome um and probably my favorite mc would have to be back in the day when woody used to mc events mm -hmm. uh, i remember as a, my freshman year as a student he mc'd the great lakes regional was the first event i ever went to so he's probably my favorite mc mm -hmm. um and a game game announcer, I'd have to say I don't. I really love Dave. Uh, or uh, thanks. <laughs> I really <laughs> like you, Dave. <laughs> um, uh, Tom Nader in Michigan. Yeah. He oh, has some nice. great one lighters. It's awesome. Nice. I would say my favorite game announcer, uh, Corey Bounds, like hands down. Ever since she game announced our team on Carson in 2017, I've just been like, holy crap. Like, you can talk about paint drawing and give me the chills, like, well done. But um, Dave Bruggy, like, ever since I was a kid, and Mark Leone, like, holy crap, uh, do the math, save the world. Like, his, like, judo kicks and, like, flipping all over the field for the entirety of champs for most of my high school career was, like, I don't understand how he was able to just be so energetic, but, um, and he, it, I think it's the anniversary of his passing recently. I was mm. thinking about that. Um, yeah. Bizarre world we're living in with like, no, no Mark, no Woody, like just so many mm. people, but like thinking back to him flipping around the field and even in, what was it? 2010, the basketball year uh, or 2012, he was still doing it. Like, it's like holy crap, man! You're gonna like break yourself. But uh, did Dave Dave Ruggie do a lot of Michigan events slash like? Oh yeah, Michigan events. Yeah, still? he still so uh, he he still does that. Like he'll be the MC at state champs. Usually he's on like the main field. Um, so he's it's usually the only event I see him at nowadays. Um, because now he's retired and lives up in like the middle of Michigan. So he does some of like he'll do Traverse City MCing and some of them up from north. Uh, events is still an MC. I'm just gonna say yeah, I just remember him like 
as a kid and then in high school, like he was the voice of champs. And when I hear it still, like I just get like chills. I'm like, oh, it's happening. Uh, yeah, like just incredible voice, like just knew how to bring it. So, and it's it's cool to see like this new generation of MCs and game announcers coming in and like really doing such a great job and like, I don't know, kudos to everybody that does it. It's it's a very, very hard gig, but um, in chat, if you are interested in winning stickers tonight, uh, type in Woody in order to win the Woody sticker and let us know what your favorite robot that you didn't work on was and favorite game announcer MC. Uh, one of my favorite robots from way back in the day was uh, 118 in 2000 and what was the year? With the, oh, it's like 3D tic-tac-toe. I can't even believe I'm blanking on that. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't remember the name of the game, but I, the Tetrahedron Lots game. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, oh. I was like, what? Yeah. Triple Blade. Triple Blade. Yeah, uh, yeah but Chainzilla, uh, 118. Well, that was 118, right? Like the... The er, crab drive? Yeah, and they had the two huge arms. Uh, mm -hmm. That was 118, right? Chainzilla. I just remember watching that robot uh, and being like, holy crap. Somebody in chat said that 190 in 2004 was their favorite robot. That robot... Uh, was insane for its time 190 just like kicking down walls and in autonomous would climb up the steps mm -hmm. hang and defend like in autonomous in 2000, 2004 um and one of my like favorite things about like my this was my freshman year of high school in 2004 and this was probably one of the one of my favorite games that I was able to like participate in as a student because there were just so many different variables and like the human player was like a critical component. It was really funny seeing these like really like good human players that clearly like weren't athletes or like athletic at all, but like were killing it at getting these dodgeballs into the the non-mobile like the the mobile goal and then the static goal. But 190 would go in and just pick the massive like yoga ball doublers that you put in. Um, at the end and defended like human player shots going in and out. Um, but somebody in chat had mentioned that and I was like, holy crap, that, that was a big robot. Like that, they, they uh, were so ahead of, of their video. time. So yeah, I, but, I, need uh, to, I need to display this video real quick for those who have not seen, it. I'm actually going to turn the audio on for it. Cause this is one of the craziest moments in FRC. So just watch this moment real quick. And this is pretty amazing. <laughs> Literally drove up over them. So yeah, it was... yeah, just so good. Yeah, like, that was like four bumpers. Absol absolutely crazy. <laughs> like just one of the guys, this moments. was this was I love old school before. FRC. Yeah, that's so that's nothing better than those old videos. Those old robots were so amazing. They were they were just beefy. You wonder why, yeah. you wonder why people would compare to battle bots because like you you look at it back then when it's just like mm. metal clanking on metal and stuff and made way more sense. It literally was back then. It was yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I'm glad that somebody in chat said uh, 190 in 2004 because this is one of the I would say most like under appreciated robots of its time. Because it just it was so ahead of its game and strategically, like strategic design wise, I think they were just absolutely brilliant. And you mm -hmm. still see that come out of 190. Like, Dave, I know you went to WPI for school, and mm -hmm. so many of those mentors that were there back in 2004 are still a part of that program now. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. And just like, like gonna give a shout out to Ken Stafford who ran the team for a while and Colleen and all of them. They do an amazing job. They got a great program. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, and real quick question for you, Margie. So you were on 47 back in the day. You went to Rumble at the Rock 47 in, what was that, 2000 and floppy disk year? Did you go to Rumble at the I Rock? I was not at Rumble at the Rock. We didn't. That was the last year we went. And it's funny that you say flop, uh, the floppies because I have two of them on my head. <laughs> that was, so that was my freshman year in high school and I wasn't in robotics yet. I joined oh, man. I joined the following year because my best friend was on the team and I didn't see her enough. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, I just remember like, that's awesome. I was at Rumble at the Rock that year, like with 175 as like a little, you know, crazy kid. And I just remember like seeing 47 there for some reason. Like it just, it's like a vivid memory in my mind. But anyway, so I, 
Yeah. That robot was dangerous. I remember oh. my uh, training, my uh, like in orientation year, and they're like, don't get your hand near the gripper because it was like 400 pounds <laughs> of gripping strength in that thing. It's, I always consider it a miracle that like old FRC robots did not severely injure anybody. As, and as like the students thing. used to like run out on the field and the human players were like, you could literally oh, be on the field. Look, look at this years. video. There's literally a human player right in the right side of that driver's station with nothing protecting him. So Just leaning over, over, like waving the Why hands not? around. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Good old By the way, students, whenever you wonder where all these weird rules came from, both in first and why, <laughs> your, and why your team has weird rules, it's because all of us broke those rules when we were students. Yeah. yeah I remember uh, they used well, to, when I was a kid, they used to um, put me in the robot cart. Like there was a little cubby and they'd wheel me up on stage. So every year when we were in Epcot, I would get to go up on stage. And one of the first times I met Woody, I like, they lifted the robot off of the cart and I popped out and Woody was standing right there. Oh yeah, it was good. Oh, oh the good old days. Yeah. All right. So for those of you who are watching, if you want to win a sticker, uh, type in Woody real quick because we're going to be wrapping up that very very soon all right uh tyler do you want to start rolling for our winners and i'm gonna quickly share i'm gonna pop into discord and see what other people are saying so okay. um for favorite robots let's see that was oh my i'm so bad right now oh favorite reveal video was one of the questions that i had asked and somebody had said this year's uh 254 is 2020 um 148 in 2017 i would totally agree with that uh 4613 in 2019 Everybody's saying 254 from this year. Uh, 179 from 2019. 179 is probably video. 179 is probably one of my favorite uh, consistent teams. Like even as a kid back in the day, like totally always good. Good. just always legendary. Uh, yeah. Lots of 118s from like 2013 this year. 2910 from 2019. <laughs> uh, somebody said favorite food. From an event, obviously, St. Louis Barbecue. I personally don't care about barbecue. I'm all about Dippin' Dots, so. Ooh. Rough take. Yeah, well. What about donuts, more... Christine? Yeah, I'm all about the donuts. Yeah. So on Uber Eats last year in um, at Champs in Detroit, because I didn't go to Houston Champs, uh, I Uber Eats, I think it was, what was it called, Tyler? 10 Mile Donuts? I don't know. It was send Tyler and Mike to a place where a drug deal is going on. So. I didn't <laughs> send you there. I said I found really good donuts. So <laughs> I There were really good donuts in the venue. I know, but they weren't they weren't there anymore. Like it was like later in the day. Everything was like closed down and like scalped out and I had eaten two dipping dots already. So I overeats donuts and they were really good. And I texted Jamie and pretended I had an emergency and said, Jamie, where are you? Something really bad's happening and I had two dozen donuts for her to shove her face into. Um so yeah, like little things you can do to make people's lives better, just Mm. Little snacks every so often when you know people are having kind of a rough time. Um, meat donuts, that'd be awesome. Yes, the donuts make you donuts. I'm all about donuts. And fun fact, up in Maine and Portland, uh, Portland, Maine, not Portland, Oregon, there's a place called Holy Donuts that makes potato-based oh donuts. Potato donuts? Yes, I have them. The last time. Nice. Stupid good. Uh, Holy donuts. I have a hat from them. Really, really, really good. Um, all right, Tyler, you want to let us know who won our... I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find this donut shop of what's going on here, but yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. They're really good. Just gotta look... All right, we'll, we'll look at these while uh, while we're rolling. Okay, so what we're going to draw for the holographic one first, and then yep. the uh, larger one uh, second on there. So, yeah! Uh, so donuts. Jose's winning the first one. Congratulations, yeah. Jose. Um, I don't know why it says Jose's not following, but I, I know you are, so we'll make sure we'll let you win that because you've been around for a long time. Jose, if you're not I... following for some reason, make sure you click that follow button. But, uh, and, uh, wow, rigged Nick Mathis wins the second one. So oh, gosh. Just, we have just rigging it all night tonight. So but congratulations. Yep. Uh, yeah. We'll make sure we get to those. And uh, make sure you check out Wordplay all day on Etsy, by the way. I'll give, we got to give Christine a plug here. she got a really cool uh, Etsy shop where you can get tons of awesome first stuff, uh, or not first stuff, robotics-related merchandise uh, yes. around there as well. So make sure you check that out. And uh, FRC Doodles on Instagram. It is an amazing current student on Celtex. Um, I got to meet her last year at Champs, mm -hmm. and I felt incredibly inadequate compared to her drawings 
she is amazing. You should go check out her work. She does commission work, and it's so cool to see how she, like, is able to take, like, photos of team members and then, like, represent them using color. And so it's it's amazing. They're awesome. So go check them out. Um, so congrats to those people who won. We're going to start wrapping up tonight's show. I feel like I could sit on air with everybody right now and talk about the good old days of FRC and donuts forever. But um, real quick, so I know that it's it's a really weird time right now. Like, nobody really knows what the right thing – or, like, what – what the normal thing to do is, I guess. So we're all kind of creating our own normal, but once things get back to a more non social distancing place, uh, what things are you most excited for involving first? Uh, Dave, I'll start with you. What things are you looking forward to post social distancing with your team and within the first community? Yeah, so with my team, I'm just excited to get back in the shop with the students. Um, we kind of left off and it felt like everybody was so motivated coming off of Northern Connecticut, right? So it'll be good to kind of get back in the shop and, uh, and get some work, uh, get some work done. We got a whole list of things. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, in terms of the community, I'm super excited to, um, to see other people's robots up close. We've been seeing a lot of like release videos, but I think mm -hmm. I learned so much actually getting, uh, to go to the competitions and I spend a ton of time walking around. Uh, the pits and talking to the students and having them walk me through the robot. I, I think that's probably one of my favorite things um, that I do in first. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, even though it'll be at off season events, it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. Margie, what about you? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to actually getting to see my kids in person um, mm -hmm. and hopefully possibly get to uh, run our robot at a tournament. I know in uh, FIM we're, there's talks of still possibly doing some type of some events for some of the teams that did not get to compete at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to, when we all can uh, not social distance anymore, because uh, I've missed my volunteers, <laughs> thinking about doing a, a meetup at like a park or something and just to hang out and stuff since we didn't get to spend the type of time we normally would during FRC. That's such a great idea, because I was thinking about that, too. I was like, man, there's so many people that, like, I just won't be able to see. Not like, oh, champs, I can't see you because you're in Houston, but, like, oh, man, like, people that are in my district and, like, relatively close that I wouldn't get to necessarily see. So I like that idea of, like, just having a meetup and, like, hanging out in a park, like, cookout or something. Like, I think that's important, too, for, like, the, the volunteer community base is so big. Like, it's, that's as much of a team, I would say, as, like, when oh, you're yeah, working with absolutely. your own team. I wholeheartedly so. agree on that. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely there with you on, like, I want to see the people that would volunteer at the event that I run. So maybe I will do that as well. I'm going to steal that idea from you, but um, yeah, I feel you on wanting to see my students. I miss them so much. I miss my students at work, except for all the noise that they make, but I do miss my students, uh, like robotics students. So if you're a mentor on a team or if you're a student on a team, make sure that you're checking in with your teammates, at least just saying hi. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be doing work, but I think everybody could at least just use a wellness check every now and then. Um, so, yeah. Um, so before we completely wrap up the show, which I would, I wish it would go on forever, um, I just want to say a huge thank you to both Margie and Dave for coming on tonight. Um, it's really cool to talk with people in the community, especially people that are deeply rooted and, like, go pretty far back and are still so relevant and important in making our first community what it is today so thank you for coming on guys um and huge thank you to everybody that is supporting fun so fun fans we rely on you to keep fun going so please consider donating bits or joining the fun nation by subscribing on twitch or pledging your support on patreon.com backslash first updates now um you'll not only You'll not only get exclusive benefits here on the stream, but it, you'll also get access to members-only Discord channels and first dibs on unclaimed prizes, which there are a lot of them from what I've heard. Uh, so the most important thing that you can do is let, other knows, let others know about fun. There are so many shows that are going on that are highlighting teams in different regions um, and FTC. This is probably the only place in the world that you'll get all the good FTC stuff and get it from the teams and people themselves that are in there. So please uh, click that follow button and make sure that you are in the Discord with over 20, uh, ugh, over 2,800 other people um, to talk to after the show. So you can go to discord.gg backslash first updates now. Um, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the occasional Snapchat takeover. It's like that, I don't know, if anybody watches The Office, like when Ryan's like, it's a woof. 
It's the uh, Wolf of Burst updates now. So Tyler, why don't you let us know who helped support the show this evening? Yeah, I got to give a big pitch. You mentioned FTC. Tomorrow is FTC Reveal Night, where we have 62 teams from the FTC community that are revealing their robots. Uh, the nice thing is, is that they, most of them can take their robots home. So uh, we will also be on the Twitch front <laughs> page uh, tomorrow as well uh, for that. So we can't wait for that. Please come join us uh, and cheer them on. Even if you're not into FTC as much, you get to see some pretty cool bots out there. So lots of cool stuff. There's a teaser for it in our Discord and on our YouTube. Uh, real quick, uh, give quick shout outs. Uh, actually, since yesterday, we forgot to do that as well, too. Uh, Red Leader 342, Zervin, Ishano, Raw 1236, Arcade Dragon, uh, uh, Nutty Neo, Evan S, uh, Crazy Chipmunk, uh, LLG, uh, It, uh, Pilever, CDF Man, uh, Redfish Robotics, Sam6328, Commaster1018, Brando125, and Mathis4130, Ola Zola, uh, all coming in with bits and with subscriptions. So thank you so much for helping fun stay loud, live, and independent. Yeah. So on behalf of myself and our producer, Tyler, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for tuning in. And thank you to all of our moderators in chat. And huge thank you to Margie and Dave again. And we'll see you next time on Roast and Robots. So talk to you then, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.